Hello everyone, uh, as Paula nicely introduced me, I'm Divya and I'm here to talk about DevOps or rather what we've gotten wrong about DevOps. Uh, but before I go ahead, I ought to set some context because uh, basically not a lot of you all know me. Um, so from the introductory slide itself, I'm pretty sure you all have gauged that I'm a crazy cat lady. So that's perfectly on point. Um, but when I'm not serving my two feline overlords at home, I am, you know, uh, working as a technical writer at SUSA. And uh, I also am an advisor to Avesha. Now, you all must be wondering uh, what's a technical writer doing here talking, uh, talking to us about DevOps. Uh, but before I actually, uh, you know, made the strange pivot into technical writing, I was a systems administrator, um, heavily involved in the build, deploy, engineering, um, and technically, uh, you know, activities that would fall under the operations side, um, until, of course, you know, DevOps came in. So, uh, once DevOps was in the picture or, you know, was adopted by the organizations I previously used to work with, um, like everyone else in this room, I attended a bunch of uh, training programs, got certified in a bunch of things. And uh, at that point in time, I didn't really understand what I was going through. Uh, like, sure, um, stuff like DevOps transformation and digital transformation were casually flung around. I didn't really understand what was the end goal of all of this uh, because all we were doing is getting new tools and technologies without actually providing any context. So today here, um, after maybe eight-ish years of having gone through that journey, um, I'm here to talk about what exactly I learned from that experience. And I believe that's important for us to share and learn and have conversations about because honestly speaking, it's um, been one hell of a ride when it comes to DevOps. And um, it's just the beginning. Uh, we have newer trends coming up every uh, now and then. We have Cloud Native, uh, which you know is another way of uh, building and deploying applications. So, we need to figure out how we do these transformation journeys or how we go about doing uh, these, uh, these uh, philosophic uh, discussions better around such trends. And um, that can only be achieved if we actually have these conversations and ha or develop better vocabulary. Because as far as I've seen, we have pretty much associated or started uh, with associating DevOps and, um, you know, tools as one and the same. We've long forgotten the fact that DevOps is actually also culture. So let's dive right in by taking a bit um, of a retrospective journey into our um, relation with DevOps. So I know right and wrong are really subjective terms because it's what we ascribe um, the quality to a person, experience, or a thing. And that is what gives it, gives it the value of right and wrong. But as an industry, I also realize that this is how, um, th that our definitions of right and wrong are really shaped by, um, you know, uh, how good, how good or how bad or how far we've gotten uh, with respect to a particular tool or a technology. And we do that with the help of measurement. So um, if we were to sort of go back and um, do a survey of how many actual organizations have succeeded in their DevOps journey far beyond the you know, association with tools, um, we'd find that the numbers are pretty low. The reason being our uh, association with tech, um, uh, or rather DevOps association with tech is far stronger and has been pretty much solidified by the way we've adopted it. So um, it's not a mistake or a um, you know, raw, uh, wrongdoing per se, but it's definitely what um, I would call as a not ideal way of adopting DevOps. And there are several things in this journey that we could have done better, and that's what we're going to look at in the next couple of slides. So the very first one uh, up here, 
I've personally been, uh, you know, guilty of this crime as well. Um, so when I was working with HSBC and previous to that, I was working with Capgemini. Uh, I was one of those people who actually applied for a ton of DevOps engineer roles. Um, and rest assured, every single time I was actually interviewing for one, uh, I ended up interviewing for a wildly different role each time. Um, and I have also been, you know, on the recruiting side of things as a manager. And I've also interviewed for wildly different roles, um, uh, you know, from the recruiting side as well. And then, of course, there's that common refrain, once you gain better knowledge, right, that there's no such thing as a DevOps engineer, really. And I've made that refrain, too. So I'm guilty of all the crimes that are possibly, um, you know, that is possible with this particular um, uh, philosophy. But as an industry, we have not gone beyond complaining that uh, you know, there's no such thing as a DevOps engineer. Uh, this particular job description that I have up on this slide is from a month back. Uh, it, we are still very much hiring DevOps engineers. And as much um, you know, as, I'd love, uh, as I love automation and as much as I love my CI CD pipelines, um, and given the amount of experience I've had in the past decade, I am pretty sure I would not be able to ace that interview. Uh, because honestly speaking, that's like um, a full stack engineer Max Pro Plus, because literally nobody on earth can, un, uh, you know, can ace that interview, because that's like the entire industry's uh, you know, progress over the last decade. So, you know, if anybody actually does that, y'all probably should actually be, you know, the CEO of the industry. I know that there's no such position, but that is what y'all should be. Um, and I still don't understand why we are recruiting DevOps engineers or even engineers for a DevOps department or a DevOps team. Like, there are legitimately teams and departments within an organization for a philosophy that basically said that you have to um, bring two siloed processes together. So a lot of organizations thought, wow, that's a great thing. Let's just build another separate department. And uh, you know what? Let's just put all the overhead of bridging that gap on them. And uh, magically or tragically, that didn't end up happening. Uh, what ended up happening was exactly what we are, uh, you know, uh, in my opinion again, uh, what we're trying to do with uh, the Mars colonization exercise. And I could be very wrong about this, but we're trying to just create new problems without actually fixing the problem at hand. So, you know, you're, you're trying to fix uh, bullet holes with band-aids, and it might work. Like, creating a third team might work until all of the team's members resign because of the amount of overhead that you're going to put on them. And when we're talking about um, you know, patching uh, bullet holes with band-aids, I'm sure a lot of us here are familiar with you know, uh, fixing people and process problems with the help of tools, or rather replacing them with the help of tools. Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't work. Um, I've shockingly discovered as you know, a senior contributor and as a manager. Um, even though DevOps strongly advocates for uh, you know, process over tooling, uh, what I have come to notice is that there's just tooling. Like, when I started out learning about DevOps, because I really wanted to know why on earth is DevOps equal to CICD every single time I actually looked at the internet, I found that it was mostly equated with uh, Jenkins pipelines and uh, you know, the other technologies that are commonly associated with DevOps. And it's not just me who has this misconception I've discovered. Like every single person who walks into rather not walks into, was forced into actually adopting DevOps um, because it was the trend of the times and keeping up with the times is extremely important to us all. Um, they were sold entire tool, uh, tool, tool chains to integrate into their existing one, uh, in existing tool chains. And then 
what ended up happening was they were not magically um, transformed into a DevOps organization. How on earth was that possible? Because you had the tool chain, right? So you should have been magically transformed. So it was clearly a problem with the philosophy, not with our implementation of it. So um, as much as you know, I love a Jenkins pipeline, uh, I discovered that just integrating it would not solve your problems. And when talking about tooling, I am pretty sure all of us have seen this sort of roadmap splashed all over LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, whichever blog platform you prefer. Uh, and this is not to take a diss at any content creator, to be honest, and uh, to be very frank. Um, they do a fantastic job of initiating people into the industry and um, there are things that could be better and this is one of them. Roadmaps for any philosophy or technology, uh, you know, um, or culture based, um, you know, term should not be just about a bunch of tools. Now imagine you're a new entrant to the entire IT industry and you're uh, looking out for your first DevOps job role. There should not be one role like that in the very first place. But if you are, imagine the amount of things you have to learn to become a DevOps engineer. And even worse, you do not know a lot about any of the other things that are going on in the industry and are just learning so that you get the job. It's like building the 20th floor of a building without having laid the foundations. And that's harmful, right? Because you don't have a solid foundation upon which you build your other tool, uh, you know, other knowledge. And what ends up happening is, uh, you know, having straw foundations, uh, which is basically not very good for anyone involved. And this is even more, uh, you know, prominent in the uh, sphere of training courses and uh, academies offering these DevOps courses and trainings to uh, help organizations. Uh, now, I'm not uh, against anyone making money here. Please don't get me wrong. Uh, I am for everyone making money and for you know people understanding more about DevOps. But a training course that basically check, uh, tick marks or check, uh, checks off all these technologies is not going to help you all. And, uh, that is basically, uh, you know, just great marketing and uh, that great marketing for one tool or technology. Um, not targeting any specific, uh, again, organization in particular. These uh, roadmaps, the, you know, trainings and courses that magically certify you as uh, tooling and technology, uh, magically certify you as DevOps, uh, you know, a DevOps professional or a DevOps certified organization, they are not really doing their job. They are, uh, you know, giving you a bunch of tools without context and, uh, you know, you're setting yourself up for failure, either as an organization or as an uh, individual. And, uh, then, you know, organizations want us to believe that without actually telling their people what is it that they are doing for the long run, things should magically uh, change. Uh, because people are not involved, right? It's just machines talking to one another at the end of the day. Um, but that's not the case, unfortunately. Um, this sleepless in silos is what ends up happening. Um, I've personally been a part of way too many production support calls to actually have, um, you know, an objective stand on this issue. Uh, but the whole problem of, uh, you know, non-collaborative environments is nowhere better demonstrated than in a, um, you know, crisis call or during an outage. Um, and especially, um, you know, uh, without that culture of collaboration where three different teams are just like, you know, separately working on their respective tool chains. Um, and incident management exercise, not exercise rather because it's more like uh, training <laughs> for a triathlon or something, but without that culture of collaboration, incident management essentially becomes a very poorly uh, coordinated firefighting uh, job. And I've been, like I said, a part of production support to objectively have a view on this. 
um, and again, not to offend anybody in the room or, or my previous employers, I'm sure all of us have been in the situation. Uh, there's something broken in production. Unfortunately, nobody has a clear idea of um, who the stakeholders are, what the end-to-end -end flow is. Um, you're busy sc scrambling to get the right resources and uh, you have no updated run books for recovery. And uh, what ended up breaking it was a change that went in on the weekend. Now, this is a hypothetical example. And the change uh, that is in my hypothetical example was not tested properly because of a broken tested testing pipeline. Um, in this hypothetical example, again, uh, um, if you raise a question uh, as to why the testing pipeline is not fixed and why we rush through the actual deployment and uh, we, nobody actually ended up checking before the customer logged in, um, recovery is prioritized, as it should be. Again, not saying that things should be left broken in production, please don't get me wrong. Uh, but recovery should be prioritized, but there should also be a plan to fix things after. That day never comes, uh, because the testing pipeline will lay broken till you know, maybe it gains dust or whatever. And what en ends up happening is it will just stay there till somebody actually raises a uh, concern from high above, saying that, please, go and fix that pipeline. And why does that happen, though? Um, DevOps promised us speed, promised us agility. And we want to deliver things fast. We want for it to be right out of the uh, you know, uh, release window. And we want for it to be delivered irrespective of however it impacts customers. Um, in that rush, we forget that uh, you know you need to automate it correctly. You need to include the tool chains correctly, and there is such a thing as haste. And believe me, it's no fun uh, when a pipeline. Forget about a pipeline. For, uh, anything breaks in production, neither for the stakeholders, nor for the support personnel, or for anyone involved in this whole uh, drama. And. On the flip side of rushing into DevOps by going really big, what some organizations tend to do is not start at all. Because it's really comfortable, right? Staying where you are. Change is really, really scary when you're you know, already steeped in your principles and steeped in your um, comfort zone. So uh, taking baby steps is essential. Um, even though they might be scary, considering the scale um, of the organization, you need to take those baby steps instead of sweeping strides. Not starting and going big or all in uh, aren't recommended practices in uh, you know, poker and also in DevOps. So you never know where you end up landing. So you always need to take up baby steps. And uh, of course, security, everyone's last uh, you know, concern until it actually becomes a concern. Uh, because honestly speaking, uh, I saved this for the last purposely because of you know, the way we approach security, not just in DevOps, but in every other sphere of our life. Um, be it you know, uh, the way we uh, flippantly just uh, leave the security part of it for maybe after the release when a CVE comes in. Um, it is one of those essential things that actually needs to be taken care of way ahead in the cycle. It's complicated, it's messy, I get it, some of the terms don't even make sense to me. But it's our job to actually educate ourselves. And um, like automation in that example, you need to put it a little ahead in the cycle and learn more about it. Procrastinating about it, postponing uh, till we can is not a great strategy um, because it will become a glaring issue. And once it does, uh, you're not going to have all hands on deck at that time. <laughs> and uh, that might not be a very good situation for either your customers or yourself if you're you know, like me on call or on production support. So now that we've looked at all the things uh, that we, and I mean we as a collective, I don't mean like we in this room, but as an industry, how do we learn from this? 
do we reinvent the wheel uh, by redefining DevOps? Or do we move on to the next flashy thing because it's like, you know, better equipped to deal with our uh, failures as, uh, not failures really, but our problems with DevOps. So if we look at our most recent escapades with Cloud Native, it doesn't look like we have really uh, gotten a good option with moving on to the next flashy thing. We're doing the exact same thing in Cloud Native that we're doing with DevOps. We have associated Cloud Native with Kubernetes, and now uh, everything Kubernetes is Cloud Native. Learn Kubernetes, you'll get into Cloud Native. That's the you know uh, phrase. And uh, unfortunately, there also, you can't just learn Kubernetes. You have to learn an ecosystem around it. You have to understand why it's being used. Because dockerizing your whole ap application is not, again, going to transform your architecture from uh, you know, mon a monolith to a microservice and speeding up your release time. It is going to take a little bit of a mind, not a little bit, a lot of mindset change to actually achieve the, uh, you know, cloud native way of building. And if we talk about the second option, that is, uh, you know, redefining DevOps, I argue that it was not DevOps that required redefining, but it's our way of uh, implementation and our way of actually uh, in interpreting the definition that has actually, uh, that does require a revamp. Now, sorry, how do we do that? How do we fix whatever we've, uh, you know, I don't say broken, but how do we fix or reroute ourselves? Uh, now, I am a huge, huge fan of uh, mental models and, uh, you know, I read a lot of Farnham Street newsletters, so, um, you know, maybe this comes from there. But um, the way we actually fix this is by going back to our very first principles. Um, why do I advocate going back to these principles? Uh, because, laying, like I said, laying down a healthy foundation is extremely extremely essential when it comes to, uh, you know, DevOps or the next big thing that's coming our way. Uh, with this visualization, I think it's a little more evident why without the cultural aspect of it, DevOps journeys would kind of be futile. Um, and when I started off with this presentation, I promise there's just a couple of slides more. But uh, when I started off with this presentation, I alluded to seeing how we could take away from this, um, you know, journey that we have made of uh, going through DevOps and making the mistakes that we made. Not only for anyone embarking on DevOps journeys, but for, you know, future reference, because we always learn by retrospecting. So first of what I think we learned was that uh, uh, when we went through all those mistakes, we did not need to start off with a big bang. It was necessary we start, but don't start off with a big bang. Um, irrespective of whether you're an individual or a company, start off with baby steps. Um, a transformation is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So you need to uh, you know, sustain your energy for a longer time. And uh, taking small, steady, measurable steps uh, is extremely important because it will not only help you sustain, but maybe during the measurement phase of it, you'll discover that you could have done things better. And maybe you'll be able to implement the whole philosophy better at an organizational level. If, at an individual level, if you are measuring your own progress, you will learn more things than you actually did if you're not doing it. That's why we, have all, we all have Fitbits. Uh, at least I do. So, uh, <laughs> And for keeping it simple, um, you know, there's no better way to, uh, you know, keep it simple than going back to your actual basics. Whether it be cloud native, whether it be DevOps, whether it be the third new thing that will come in like another five years, um, chasing the latest fad uh, via roadmaps or a checklist uh, will not end up, uh, you know, clarifying a lot of things for you. You need to have strong foundations you need to have your basics sorted out. So for anyone, irrespective of whether it's an organization, whether it's an individual, you need to have strong foundations. How you lay them is obviously contextual. So I cannot like give you a roadmap right now and say this is the way you do it. It's contextual. So you need to you know, figure out, assess, and then go ahead with your journey. 
Um, but one thing is for sure, uh, we have repeatedly been doing, um, you know, mul uh, multiple transformation journeys over the last decade itself. First it was DevOps and now it's Cloud Native. Uh, and we haven't seen a lot of success. I don't mean to say we haven't seen success in the adoption of tools that we have, but we haven't seen success in the benefits side of things wherein we are reaping all those, uh, you know, advantages that we spoke of. We need to stop and not really stop, but pause and recognize that uh, such trends involve people. They involve a cultural shift and a mindset shift over and above, you know, the tool chain that comes along with these technologies. And that shift needs to take place in order to propel this movement ahead. So, yeah, uh, I know I have been, you know, talking a lot about uh, <laughs> this and I think I'll take a stop here. Uh, thank you so much for your patience and I'm truly grateful to the organizers to, you know, for actually allowing me to speak here. So, uh, and, you know, for the opportunity as well. It was lovely speaking with you all. And uh, let's not stop the conversation here. Uh, I think I'm going to be running out of time because I've been rambling for so long. So I'm pretty active on Twitter where I also ramble and, uh, and I have, I maintain a fine balance of shit posting and memes. Uh, and you can find me on LinkedIn um, also where I'm not as active, but I'll try. <laughs> But I'll be here all day, today and tomorrow. So please feel free to get in touch uh, and hope you'll have a fantastic rest of the event. Thank you.